Today on Engineering Newswire, brought to you by Interpower, the premier supplier of power system components for worldwide markets. We're hailing the gods of Robot Rock, taking care of business in a smart potty, and building a firewall with spandex. Have you ever felt like the music you listened to just had too much emotion? Maybe it was just too imperfect? At the same time, who wants to listen to computer-generated drivel? Enter Compressorhead, a band of robots that brings a whole new definition to the term metalhead. These guys may be pre-programmed for listening perfection, but they actually play their instruments. Stick Boy, the drummer and first built of the group, was created to exacting specifications for the ideal drummer. Utilizing compressed air and MIDI control, he uses forearms, two legs, and a smaller counterpart to cover a 14-piece drum kit. Fingers, the guitar player, was built with 78 robotic fingers, enabling him to hit every fret and pluck every note on the neck of the guitar. And now, most recently built, Bones, is the bass player, the most anatomically accurate appendages available. Though his style doesn't quite match that of Lemmy, he does pick every note with his fingers. All hail the gods of Robot Rock. All right. Researchers at Purdue University are creating a system for doctors so they can browse medical images during surgical procedures using only their hand gestures to help decrease the risk of spreading infection causing bacteria. The system uses depth sensing cameras, specialized algorithms, and contextual information to observe the surgeon's head and torso to determine and continuously monitor what the surgeon wants to do. It also recognizes hand gestures as commands to manipulate MRI images on a large display screen. According to Juan Pablo Wax, assistant professor of industrial engineering, the major challenge is getting the system to differentiate between intended and unintended hand gestures. Hmm. Interesting. I knew a man who had similar problems. Never has a bed sheet seemed so inspirational. At least that was my first thought when I laid my eyes on Firewall, an interactive audio-visual experience created by Mike Allison and Aaron Sherwood. Firewall is a stretched sheet of spandex that acts as a performance membrane which, when activated, creates fire-like visuals and expressively plays music. As you run your hands over and into the spandex with greater pressure and speed, the music becomes more intense. Just beautiful. The gray wall of fire captures information using a Kinect camera, which measures the average spandex depth from the frame it's mounted on. No pressure, no sound. As you lay your hands into the piece, the visuals react and the music begins. Using an algorithm created with Max, Ellison and Sherwood program the music to speed up and slow down and get louder or softer based on the depth. It provides a very expressive musical experience even for people like me who have never played music before. It makes you think what else you could do with a tightly stretched sheet. Let's try and make some magic with the green screen. You get anything? You get anything? How about, how about now? Yeah, there it goes. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. No. Oh, oh, no, I've lost it. At CES this year, a lot of strange gadgets made their debut. One in particular, the iPotty, caught my eye. Hey, I'm a mother who knows about all the ins and outs of potty training a stubborn toddler. All of the many, many outs. Oof. Produced by CTA Digital of Brooklyn, New York, the iPotty seeks to make the toilet training experience easier by allowing parents to attach an iPad to the plastic potty. Kids can enjoy playing the many available potty training apps while taking care of business. They even get rewarded once number one or number two has been completed. The iPotty comes equipped with a detachable stand, which includes a safeguard for the iPad for those moments the kids miss or decide to be sustainable and use their hands instead of toilet paper. It happens more than you think. Oh, Chris, you forgot the safeguard again! Come on! While this gadget may seem a bit wacky for you non-parent types, 
I do appreciate the company's attempt to distract young ones during a time that can actually be quite intimidating to them. Not only that, they are even making it somewhat educational by incorporating digital technology, which is a heck of a lot better than some of the advice I received from those so-called expert books. Tip number 13, get a potty whisperer. What kind of tip is that? And who grows up thinking, you know, I may want to be a potty whisperer or a potty ninja, or even worse, a potty evangelist. Seriously? If you want to debut a 3D printer, by God, put that thing on Kickstarter. Months removed from the explosive debut of Form 1 3D printer from Form Labs, the Robo 3D printer is the latest consumer-focused product to raise a lot of money in very little time. A quarter of a million dollars for more than 500 backers, and they still have two weeks to go. The open source printer has its sights set on similar consumer products, such as MakerBot's Replicator 2, by offering greater specs at a fraction of the cost. Replicator 2 comes in at $2,200, while Robo 3D is priced at $520. Not bad, since it nearly doubles the build volume and offers better overall layer resolution. Robo 3D prints in both ABS and thermoplastic polyester derived from renewable resources in layers as tight as 100 microns. Hey, how small is 100 microns? That's small, David! Thank you, Megan. Nearly every level of funding is sold out, but a few spots remain which could place this desktop printer in your queue before anyone else has a chance to print their own tiny Yoda heads, iPhone covers, or if you're ambitious, a complete set of 1982 Milwaukee Brewer action figures. I'm just saying, everyone can dream. Do you have story ideas? Comment below and we'll cover them in an upcoming episode. For PD&D TV, I'm Chris Fox, and this has been your Engineering Newswire.